Yo, it's Mel from Rap Rankings. To hear the full episode this clip comes from and all the other episodes, stop by raprankings.com or search Rap Rankings on your favorite podcast platform. Track four, Stunner, produced by Isaac Flame. Flat eight. Moles and all connect. Flat eight. Oh my god. I mean, let's just oh let's get it going, okay? This is the this we have entered second gear. <laughs> This is the thugger, okay? Fucking finally, we're here. This is the yes. real intro. We got through all the big name features. I mean, we still have uh, Gucci coming up later, but, you know, he's done so many songs with Gucci at this point. That's nothing new. You know, he put the, he obviously front loaded these features for the most part. Yes. To me, this is where the tape begins. To me, too. <laughs> okay. And to me too. I'm gonna say this is tied with four other songs for my favorite on the tape. Wow. Okay. It gets even so, better than this for me. Okay, heads up, folks. It gets even better. But yeah, this is the real intro, man. This is where This feels this is... like the logical progression from you know the Rich Gang and Barter Six. Albums. Right, and that's what I wanted more of coming into this tape, you know? this is These are the kinds of songs that define that run of his for me. So yes, when, but imagine, this is what I need. Right? Yes. Imagine if those first three tracks didn't exist. Like, Take Care of the Song was just leaked back when it came out, or it was released single when it came out on its own. Right. Forget about Quarterback and Rari. The tape begins with Stunna. Okay, imagine just pressing play, and, you, and the first thing you hear is. And you hear that like chopped up siren. I'm a fucking Okay. So, yeah. folks, the the pre show is over. You know the the pay per view has begun. This is the fireworks going off. Welcome to Slime Season. Welcome to WWE Slime Season. <laughs> okay, we're here now. This is the moment. Okay, right. Oh. You know, you see the video package. Bill Cosby is the announcer for some reason. I guess WWE, after already getting axed from NBC Universal, now <laughs> has joined up with Bill Cosby because they said, fuck it, our reputation's already been destroyed with one suggestion. So in order to keep this place going, we got Bill Cosby. He's not only the uh, an, like the announcer voice that you hear at the beginning <laughs> of the show and on the video packages. He's also the ring announcer. The ring announcer. He should do commentary. He's, he should be the backstage yeah, he's, guy. He's all. He's running around. Listen, they they've got they've got this man working like doing like five jobs. He has to make a man for his crimes. Okay. Yes, and he's always he's not allowed to interview the female performers. Exactly, I was just about to say it. He's always asking the male performers like about the fiend and if they're worried that the fiend is going to target them next. <laughs> That's money. That's money. Honestly, it's a money concept. <laughs> Listen, and then he's gonna and he's gonna like tell he's gonna cut just randomly cut promos too and be like the reason why we lost the TV deal with NBC Universal is they feared the fiend. Right. <laughs> the honestly the most bizarre piece of media to ever be produced would have to be Bill Cosby presents WWE slime season. <laughs> like <laughs> like no nothing's topping that. Stunner. And then you know like I guess like Kevin Owens comes out cuz he does the stunner. Yep. You know, he comes out to Stunna. <laughs> Everyone comes out to different Slime Season songs. Oh. That's great. Oh, don't don't get me. I got to relax because now I'm going to be thinking, like, who would get what song? We cannot go I down mean, that rabbit hole. The, the Fiend's getting freaky. That I know. Yeah, I was just... <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 
<laughs> All right, maybe Matt Riddle's getting overdosing. <laughs> yeah! Sami Zayn, does he get best friend? Oh, absolutely. Honorary <laughs> use. You know, yeah. Roman Reigns gets power. Ooh. Oh, he's a bitch on Roman Reigns, y'all. You dig that? Dig that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, draw down? Who's who's not a draw? Drew McIntyre? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. He got a great song, but... but uh. And I'm going to pull the joint out on all of them. Like, that sword he's always swinging around, Quick you know? Quick draw McGraw, right, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. You know what? Rastafari smoking on Marley. Kofi Kingston brings back the Jamaican oh, the gimmick, gimmick for one oh, night only. Oh, man. Oh. Wood, wood. <sighs> he does doing the whole clap tape. on beat. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> this is definitely this is definitely teetering into Bulls and have CTE territory. Yeah, this is uh no close. way. I mean, bring back no way, Jose for one night. You know, no way, no no oh, way. They did drop him. They did. Yeah, yeah. Damn. All right. Well, I mean, yeah, bring him back. Bring him back. Tripo has been bringing people back. Bring back no way, Jose. Okay. Uh. Well, it's been a lot of wrestlers that play football. Someone's got to get quarterback, you know, like uh, uh, Baron Corbin. Yeah, give it, give it Baron Corbin. I mean, what song does he got right now? Nobody knows. What's this song? Nobody, nobody cares. You know, even we a flat Bill six Cosby would be an presents WWE slime season. <laughs> the pay review has to conclude with him having a heart attack and dying. <laughs> the fiend finally shows up. He's like, the fiend! The fiend! The fiend! The fiend! The fiend! <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, no, we just we just came up with the best piece of media ever, okay? That's nothing's topping that. All right, I'm sorry, folks. Give up. Don't make no more TV, no movies, no music. No, nah, I can't end with Bill Cosby dying in the ring. Bill Cosby dies in the ring, and then Ric Flair comes out and starts crying, and then it's over. <laughs> there we go. That's a 10. That's a 10. As the Fiend just sits there, like, just staring at this whole thing, not <laughs> reacting whatsoever. <laughs> oh, man. Um, <laughs> folks... Only a good mixtape could inspire such whacked out, gacked out thoughts from Wolves and Mail. You got to understand. So, Tony Khan, I can't even do it. <laughs> Bill Cosby, okay. You ain't got the fiend. <laughs> Got the promos the whole night on everybody. Tony Khan, NBC. It's just come on, come on, um, folks. I like this record a lot. If you can't tell, okay, no, nothing else would inspire this level of, of, of buffoonery. No, right. this is, this is, this, sh- oh, okay, so you were talking about, like, that karate chop flow? Yes. To me, this is the peak of it on this stage. It is. The, the way the hook follows, like, the bounce, he's almost, like, out of breath by the end of the hook. Like, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, in a second. Yeah, and like, then, the, like, dude, the ad libs, like, just like that, when he said it, he's like, yeah. the, this is the era of from him, and yeah, yeah, sheesh, what? All of that. I need the soundboard. <laughs> I need the Young Thug 2015 ad lib soundboard. Okay, just oh, really this whole tape. That just like the ad lib machine. There are many songs on this tape. I will do my best to convey this to the audience. But a lot of these songs, their enjoyment comes from not just the words. Don't get me wrong. He's not a bad rapper. But it's the little pockets and spaces in between where he's just like yelping something or just like sneaking something in there Which, that sets the whole thing off. When you go to play the tape back over and over again, it's almost like you've been given the option what lead you want to follow. You could either right. just do ad libs, <laughs> you could just do the raps, or you could mix it up. You can mix it up, exactly. Folks, I <laughs> I probably have at least 50 like – saved snapchat videos of me acting out these songs in 2015 i'll post one of them i'll post one of them when the episode drops like they're so fun to rap along to and just perform along with him 
he he is one of the greatest performers we've ever seen in hip hop. Okay, I don't think that that's not crazy to say. Okay, the greatest performers. I don't mean like stage performers. I mean on record, <laughs> studio performers. But what's great about this record is he's hitting the peak of that karate chop flow. Like you know, he's doing big beat, stung up, and bzz, he's the beat. It all leads off to him, like, to me, I picture him, like, taking off, like, the weighted training clothes. He took, like, that freaking Broly restrictor off of his off of his face, or his, his waist, and he launches right into the... Have inside the coop and drop the roof, because I don't like it, man, you did. Yeah. <laughs> oh I'm, I, that is... Oh the roller God. coaster. I'm going right? to cry. Right. Or I think, as we said on the Rich Gang review, it's like an Olympic routine, Right. He's like doing acrobatics and he's on that beam. He's like flipping around. It's so. It, Mama gave me a head on the brain and I bought him his brand new way. I'm a boy, I'm a now living like a pig. <laughs> that, that is what you, I have to perform it that way because that's what makes it pop. Signs of many deals. Is, I think I got the best sig. It's I can like, write. I can write. <laughs> what? It's. <laughs> Highly technical rapping, but <sighs> reined in a bit for the songwriting. Yes. Right? Yep. So he has pockets of what you just did, right. but he's also doing the karate chop flow, and he's also doing the the thing where he's taking the words and stretching them out and singing them. Yeah. So, I mean, it feels like an evolution of what Wayne was doing. An evolution, right. not a copy. Because there's a lot of times where we hear someone and it's like, damn, they just sound like they spent their whole life listening to this artist and now here they are to give you the watered down version. That's right. not what this is. This is like, okay, Wayne not taking anything away from him because he's better at certain things than Young Thug. Right. But Young Thug evolved the skill set in a way. He laid the blueprint with like that that like prostitute flange type crooning, you know that Wayne yeah, but played. The thing about he was the prostitute first prostitute flange, and this is something that Drake learned with like nothing was the same. Prostitute flange is prostitute flange. He doesn't spaz out lyrically at any point on prostitute flange. It's a straight up singing record, right? Yeah, you know if he and... did more. I think the thing about Thug is that he's pulling from all these different areas. So it's like the karate chop flow, the Wayne syrupy vocals, and then this double time flow that he's doing, but only in pockets. Right. So it's like, you've got Wayne, like, you know, late two thousands Wayne influence. You've got, you know, this contemporary Atlanta influence, but then you've also got double time flow. You know, yeah, you know, but you've just you've you've got him doing it in a way that feels like he's evolving it in some form or fashion, as opposed to just tracing over it. All, all of those things existing on one record is what makes the Young Thug experience so mind blowing. Because it'd be different if he's like he was doing one of those things on one record, and then can find another one of those things. All of this is happening on the same song. Like you, right. you talk about the Wayne influence, him coming out of uh, sign so many deals. They got the best sig. Into the way he delivers this is that he had no he had evil, no I evil, see, I no, see no evil. evil. That's very Wayne, okay? Like I ain't kidding, Wayne, but I called the bitch and now she my mama. See <laughs> And then he'll like rant back up and play with my head up. I see watermelon. Nigga moving slow in the caterpillar. I got a hundred thousand hoes trying to get a million, and then flips right back into. I got a hundred thousand cushions. I'm, keep I'm, keep keep I'm almost at the finish, and these niggas still begin. Like, like, how is he doing? <laughs> to this day, I'm like, how is he doing this? How how do you do this? You know, like I'm still fascinated by him doing these things. You know, it, it's. <laughs> I hope I'm communicating this properly. It was the fact that he was merging all of this fearlessly. Like, we know that he's an enigma and that he doesn't really explain himself too often, which is a good thing. When you do something like this, you should just let it be a mystery. But it's like, 
if I was able to do stuff like this, I don't know. I might be trying to tell everybody, like, you know, oh, I drew from this and I, I fused this with this. Like, give me my credit. He would just put these. Well, he wouldn't even, but they would leak. <laughs> they yeah. would leak. They'd just be out. And it's like. But they would leak and they would sound like this. So it's like, oh, shit. He's got to be somewhat hands on in the recording process of this because it kind of sounds finished. Right. Away. He had some of the most finished sound and leaks ever, come to think of it. Like, Absolutely. they were ready to be released, you know? Like, my oh, my favorite moment on the song in verse two, I got more money than you and you, you and you and you and you, and you, and you, and you too. too. <laughs> I ain't even care what I got a motherfucking cool with this blue. <laughs> okay? Like, oh my God. It's just in credit to who produced this? Who is this? Uh, Isaac Flame. He gave Thug, like, one of those perfect beats for him to be bouncy and elastic on. Because it has, like, its ebbs and flows. You know, there's, like, these percussive noise. Sounds like a money counter. And, like, the right, pan to the right. He's got them hovering spaceship sense you know I love so much. Like, and Thug is losing his fucking noodle (laughs) on the air. Like, this was a spiritual experience for me. You know, like hearing this, it's like you can really do whatever. Now, it's not this easy. He makes it look easy. It's not this easy. But hearing Young Thug for the first time unlock something in my brain as a rapper where it's like, you can do like these weird ideas, like just try it. <laughs> you know, like this was like, you know, you never know what you'll end up with. Like he was an inspiration to me in that regard. So and it's because of records like this. The true intro to the tape, okay? A flat eight. Like it a lot, okay? He is a stunner. But like I said, it gets even better for me. So, uh, <laughs> you got anything else, Fish? No. All right, well, hey, we can move on to... Yo, it's Mel from Rap Rankings. To hear the full episode this clip comes from and all the other episodes, stop by raprankings.com or search Rap Rankings on your favorite podcast platform.